other, but all right, we'll just. Awesome. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. Good, good to see morning. you guys. Megan, good to see you. How you doing? Hadley. Awesome. And Hadley, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. What's up? How's it Sheldon going? Steele in the house. And Mark, Mark Strayer. Good to see you. And Sarah good Irving morning. from Portland representing. And Chris Bacqual. And Samantha Lottie, good to see you. Let's get those cameras on, people. We'll get we'll get more out of it uh, being front and center here. Lachelle, yeah, we want to see your money maker. We want to see that money maker. That's right. Let's see the money. Lachelle from Chico, good to see you. Awesome, awesome. And Kim Duong, good to see. You. Well, we'd like to see you. Glad you're on here. Get those, get those, and Eli, that's an interesting one. <laughs> I don't know why it's on my dad. That's a conversation starter, Eli. I might have to use that, put that in my repertoire there. That's pretty good. <laughs> Evie, good morning. Good morning, Melissa and Savannah and Austin. All right, we're all coming in here. We got a special treat this morning for everybody. Awesome, awesome. Well, welcome everyone. Atomic Habits Wednesday, August 17th. I'm gonna turn it in, turn it over to Matthew Stewart. Matthew, let's rock and roll. Awesome, awesome. All right. I'm just gonna give it one more minute or so as people are trickling in here. Uh finishing up calls. Savannah says good morning in the chat. I love it. I love it. And um who else do we have on here that doesn't have their camera on? Let's get your oh, there's Troy Lyon. And that is not a uh, fake background. That's actually his uh, his deck there. It's pretty amazing. And Coach Jeff Sutherland, good to see you, rock star, representing Arizona. We got people from all over the nation here. This is awesome. And, uh, mm -hmm. and internationally. And Bella. Now, is it Bella Loomis or Bella from Loomis? <laughs> She's muted. <laughs> She's my new assistant. Oh, she's from Arizona then. Yeah, she's sitting in the in the room next to me. And I okay. have another gentleman, Mark, on the line from North Carolina. He's looking at our company. So welcome, Mark. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I said hi to Mark. Awesome. Well, for sake of time, I don't want to take any more of uh, Sir Darren Jacklin's time, but you guys are absolutely in for a treat. We got more people filtering in here, but Sir Darren Jacklin has turned into a friend of mine. We spent some time together in uh, Lake Tahoe at a mastermind. The guy has an absolute heart of gold. He loves people. He loves giving back. Like he literally leads with service. Um, I heard him on another um, leader's call and was so impressed with just his energy and information and so on. I said, hey, we're doing a mastermind. We want to have you uh, come and be a speaker. Would you even be open to that? And this was his response. He lives in Canada. He goes, well, I'm actually a guest speaker at a conference. They're having me speak in Boston, but I, yeah, I could fly red eye and be there. I'm going, okay, I, I got to tell this guy, we, we don't have anything in the budget to pay you. Right. And he goes, oh no, no. I just love to serve. If I could be there to bless you guys, I'll do it. I'm going, oh my gosh. And he goes, yeah, just talk to my travel. He's, he's such a big deal. He's got a travel gal that handles all his, cause he's wanted all over the world. So he came and wow, did he just blow our, blow our minds and knock our socks off with some of the information and energy. And so I said, Hey, would you come and pour into our, our team members here for our Wednesday meeting? And of course he said, Oh, I'd love to, I'd love to have the opportunity. So um, he's on our board of directors with EXP in addition to about three other I think maybe three or four other board of directors paid positions where people want his knowledge and expertise and information. So I'm going to step aside, sir, Darren, you could tell him that very few people are actually knighted. He's actually knighted. I think I'm trying to remember the numbers, 200 plus people, I think were chosen or maybe more and only 40 in the world. Am I correct in my numbers? Yeah. So it's actually uh, 400 people were nominated globally for the last few years around the world. Uh, the 400 men and women globally around the world, all the different countries, there was uh, 24 people chosen for the world, 15 men and nine women globally. 
And so I was one of the 24 people on the planet out of about 8 billion Amazing. people that were chosen to become knighted by uh, the Royal Family out of Spain for uh, all the humanitarian and philanthropy and uh, entrepreneurship and business stuff I've done over the last uh, 30 years of my life. You're like Sir Richard Branson, Sir Darren Jacklin. It's amazing, right? Sir Thomas Daves, right? So, all right. Well, take it away, Sir Darren. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm really honored and grateful to be here. And thanks, everyone, for qualifying their time and protecting their time to be here. I know we have a short period of time, about 30 minutes for me to uh, really uh, give you some practical training development today that can really move you forward with your life personally, professionally, but also your family. I'm going to share with you. I just turned 50, actually, just two weeks ago. And I want to share with you some things that I've had a chance to reflect and review on. What are some practical steps, you know, and systems and processes of things that I've learned that have really moved the measurable needle in my life? Um, you know, I have a portfolio of companies today. I have a portfolio of real estate. Uh, we have our own family foundation. We've committed $100 million over the next 10 years towards global philanthropy projects. And I might say some big things. You're thinking, my gosh, that's a mind stretch for you. That's dream building, right? And for how many of you know my background? Anybody? just show a hand, just how many, so a few of you know my backstory, most of you I don't think, so I'll just spend like 90 seconds, give you a quick little high level background story. Um, I grew up in a small town in Canada, less than 20,000 people in population, failed grade one of public school and was misdiagnosed with a learning disability and a reading disability. And it was determined by the school system at that time to put me into special education classes. So from grade one to grade 12, I was in special education my entire life. I never went to regular public normal school. So when I was seven years old, I created my first company called Rent-A-Kid. I would go out and cut grass, shovel snow in the wintertime, deliver newspapers six days a week. And by the time I was nine years of age, I hired my best friends. You know, this is going back 40 plus years ago, and we're still great friends to this day because of building long-term relationships. And um, so from there, I went through school, struggled academically, uh, then did multiple suicide attempts to end my life. And I ended up uh, turning myself into a counseling office who then introduced me to a Dale Carnegie training program to a Toastmasters program. And that kind of launched me into uh, multiple different uh, industries over a period of time. So there's a lot more you can research online or do some discovery or due diligence on. But um, I'm grateful today that uh, I serve on EXP World Holdings Board of Directors. I've been around since 2013, since we had a few hundred people in the company. We were a private little small residential startup company building the airplanes we we're flying it. Um, and we had a lot of turbulence. We had a lot of turbulence. If we're all on a commercial airline, you know, we had a lot of headwinds, a lot of turbulence, and it was a rough flight. Uh, some of you've been on commercial airlines, you know, those rough flights where you're bouncing around and it's, you just hope the pilots are well trained and they know what they're doing to, to land the plane successfully and uh, safely. And so the key thing is, is that as the markets are changing right now, and there's a lot of people in the media and the talking heads that are out there, they're talking about the real estate industry is changing, you know, inflation, all these things. The key thing is to start the scenario plan, you know, best case scenario, likely case scenario, and worst case scenario. And one of the things I'm going to share with you today is if we're up in the International Space Station looking down on planet Earth, and we look at all the human beings on this planet, all we are is a network of conversations. And I'm going to share with you from practical results-based experience, okay, from somebody, if you look at my background, my track record, statistically, uh, I shouldn't be where I am today in terms of business success, accomplishments, personally, freshly, all these things, statistically, you would never have bet on me, okay? You would have been, it would have been high speculation. And so the key thing is today is to look at is that as human beings, all we are is a network of conversations. At the end of the day, we're in the people business, okay? We're not the technology business. We're not the real estate business. We're in the people business. And three key things, if you're taking notes, you want to write this down. When you meet people, you're either transactional or you're relational. Okay, you're going to be in one, one or the other. You're going to be a transactional person or you're going to be a relational person. If you are transactional, I invite you to consider just weighing the options to transition yourself to becoming a relational type person. And that could be, you can be a task oriented person where you just want to make things happen, get things done, your results are like myself. But the key thing is when you become a relational type person, people get to know you, like you, and trust you. Those are three key ingredients to get to know you, like you, and trust you. When people get to know you, like you, and trust you, they will do business with you. Money will change hands successfully. And also, as they get to know you, like you, and trust you, they'll introduce you to their network or their inner circle or people that are in their mobile phone or in their neighborhood or their communities. Once they get to know you, like you, and trust you. Now, as we run very busy lives, 
People are busy, 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 busy. The key thing is we use these different technologies like CRMs and text messaging. And, but the key thing is, is, is if you're dealing with people that are you know, 35, 40, 50, 60, 70 years of age, they still like to pick up the telephone and have a live telephone conversation with people. So in changing markets and changing conditions, people start to experience fears, doubts, worries, and insecurities. Because you got to look at where are most people getting their source of information or news media from? Well, the mass media channels, the internet. So that's where most people are getting their education. Most of that is lack and scarcity consciousness, right? It's, it's, it's making you come from a place of fear and doubt and worry and panic and uncertainty versus going to somebody who's a high net worth or ultra high net worth investor in real estate and say, hey, look, tell me what your portfolio has been doing in the last 90 days. What, what have you been talking to with your teams about? and get an accurate review from somebody who's already got a lot of financial skin in the game. So when I want information on what's going on in the marketplace, I talk to people who are high net worth and ultra high net worth. And I wanna do a deeper dive into what their portfolio is telling me because here's the thing, numbers don't lie, people do. Numbers don't lie, people do. So what I invite you to do is during this time we got today is think about in your life, personally, actually, who are the men and women that are in your life that are on social media with you, right? It could be Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, some of the other social media platforms that you interact with. Who are people in your neighborhood, your community, your church, uh, a nonprofit group, a service club, your fitness center, or gym? Who are people that you see that really it's a surface conversation? Like you, you, it's like, you know, you say hello or good morning or good afternoon to people, but it's really a surface conversation. There's, there's, there's not much substance to the conversation other than, you know, you see somebody at the front desk at the gym when you check in, or you see somebody every week at church when you go to church, or when you drop off your dry cleaning, you see somebody at the dry cleaning, but you don't really know that person. And so what I want to invite you to consider doing as we go through the month of August and we go through the next few months of this calendar year is take these conversations to a deeper level so that people get to know you and like you and trust you. Because again, we're in the people business. All we are is a network of conversations. So when you look at other human beings, we're just a network of conversations. And I'm going to share with you that as children, when we grew up based on our environments, we were taught by most of our environments, don't talk to strangers. Don't talk to strangers. People are unsafe. I'm going to share with you right now that strangers have everything you want, everything you need, and everything you desire in your life. I have thousands of people in my mobile phone. I can be anywhere on this planet, and I can access anybody at any time around the world through telephones, through apps that I've got. So I want to share with you that anything you want in your life. So one of the things to consider, if you want to make more money this year and finish this year strong, I'm going to tell you right now that you're one phone call away from somebody in your network to close in a deal. Okay, I've raised millions and millions of dollars. Um, you know, I've done a lot of things in my life in business, just bought two companies, two multi million dollar companies in the last 90 days, buying a couple more companies here this year, um, doing things. And, and I've bought a lot of real estate. I own a lot of real estate across North America from single family to car washes to medical office buildings that are in my portfolio. So I'm coming from personal experience as somebody who's got a lot of financial skin in the game. Not somebody who's just giving you lip service or talking about it. I've, you know, I've written checks for this stuff. So I'm talking about a lot of skin in the game, right? So I'm coming from practical experience. So one of the key things is what you want to look at is you want to start calling people. So let me give you some real things. Call people up. And one of the key things when we're in a changing marketplace is ask people, how are you doing? What's going on in your life? You know, during COVID-19, during the lockdown, I was in conversation and communication with lots and lots of people all over the world, okay, through WhatsApp, through telephone calls, through different social media apps, and I was calling people, touching base with them, and yeah, is it time consuming? You better believe it, but you're qualifying your time, you're protecting your time, and I was calling people to find out what are they dealing with, what's going on in their lives. Now, I was becoming relational, not transactional, and what I was doing was Connecting with people to find out what's going on in their world. See, most people are too busy today to find out what's going on in people's world, right? But if you come from a small town or you spoke from a small community around North America or internationally, you will find the people in small towns, they get to know people at a much deeper level than people that live in major centers and major cities. And if you look at people who live in small communities, why do they get along? Why do they, why do, they do community projects? Why do they get to know each other and trust each other and like each other? Why do they do business with each other? Because they have that community mindset. 
So the key thing is in a changing marketplace, what you want to do is reach out to people. But here's the key thing. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a warning. And this, this, by the way, this warning that I'm going to share with you cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars to make this mistake. I learned from experience, but it cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars. In my 20s and 30s, when I would meet people, I was pretty aggressive. I was like, you know, I was, I was go, 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 whatever it takes. And I would pitch and sell people. And here's the warning. I want to invite you today to stop pitching and selling people and start educating and informing people. Because when you pitch and sell, you repel people. When you educate and inform people, you attract people. So stop pitching and selling and start educating and informing people. So whether it's sharing the opportunity about eXp Realty, it's looking at having people buy or sell or invest in real estate. The key thing is you start to educate and inform people by sharing information with them. Hey, not, not sure if you're aware of this going on. And you start to share information versus pitch and sell them. I had a guy this morning, I blocked on WhatsApp. This guy's in some, this guy's in the deal of the month. He's been, this guy's been involved in 11 cryptocurrency companies in the last six months. And finally I had enough of them because he's not respecting my boundaries because we teach other people how to treat us. So I blocked him this morning and I'm just like, enough, Gopal, enough. Okay. You're chasing shiny objects and, and, you know, deal with the lack of financial integrity that you have. This guy is so many out of integrities when it comes to his finances, but he's chasing some of the deal of the month kind of club thing, right? He doesn't realize that he's, he's repelling people and myself and a few other people are just sick of this guy, okay? But you see, the thing is you got to look at in your life in sales, we're either attracting or repelling people, right? So the key thing is you want to attract people into your life by who you become. Now, I'm going to share something with you. Success is not something you go out in the world to pursue. We're taught that in universities and colleges, go climb the corporate America ladder, go out and do this, go out and hustle, go out and grind. Success is not something you go out in the world to pursue. Success is something you attract into your life by the person that you become. I got knighted by the person that I became. Over the last several years, people have been watching, observing me, seeing what I'm doing consistently, seeing my integrity, watching my actions, right? Not my lips, but watching my feet move consistently. And I got nominated by a few different people through a nomination committee to be looked at being knighted. And that was because of not because of who I am as a human being, not what I'm doing, but who I'm being as a human being, being, doing, and having. And so the key thing is when we're, when we're in sales mode, we want to get out there, we want to close the deal, we want to hustle, we want to grind. The challenge is when we step back and we say, okay, who am I being? When I can really look at myself and say, okay, in my life, what I can do is when I approach people, am I really present and listening to people? So one of the things I invite people to do is to always consider, you know, get around people in your network, your inner circle and ask them, hey, what are my blind spots? What are my insecurities? People that know you and trust you, ask them, hey, from your observation, what are my blind spots in business? What are my insecurities that you see that I have? And have that conversation with them and have that growth opportunity experience. I do this all the time with my teams that work with me. Hey, what do you see my blind spots are? What do you see my insecurities are as a leader? What do you see my insecurities are as a business person? What do you see my insecurities are as a board of directors member? What do you see my blind spots are? And I'm always asking for honest feedback, okay? And you'd be amazed that some of the people that are in your life, when they give you honest feedback in terms of full transparency, how much of a growth opportunity that is for you. Because think about this, as a salesperson, how often do you evaluate yourself? Like, do you evaluate yourself every 30, 60, 90 days, every quarter? Do you actually sit down and really evaluate your performance of who you are? And I invite you, if you were a professional athlete, and I work with a lot of professional athletes, because in a few weeks, I'm going to do a fundraising event for some top professional athletes to raise money for, for schools we're building as a nonprofit. But the thing is, is the key thing is they're always looking for feedback as a professional athlete. So as a professional salesperson or as a professional business person, are you looking for feedback? And I ask that you invite feedback to come to yourself. So here's two things. I'm going to give you uh, an exercise I'd like you to do because I'm all about results and moving things forward. So one of the things I want you to do is I want you to write down question number one. And question number one is, I want you to take a look. And here's the question. Where am I not requesting in my life? And I'd like you to write down this question. Where am I not requesting in my life? Okay, this is question number one. Where am I not requesting in my life? And I'll give you question number two, and I'm going to unpack this for you. Question number two is, who do I become 
when I don't make requests? Who do I become when I don't make requests? Okay. So question number one is where am I not requesting in my life? And question number two is who do I become when I'm not making requests? So I'm going to share something with you. In your life, if you want to achieve a lot more goals at an accelerated rate, it comes down to two things, requests and promises. Requests and promises. If I asked all of you right now to produce what are your top 10 goals for this year that you're committed to, here's my top 10 goals. Okay, these are my top 10. I have over 7,000 written goals for my life. And my target is to get to 10,000 written goals. But right now I have over 7,000 written documented goals for my life personally and professionally. Last week I achieved 13 of the goals, okay? And I'm obsessed with writing down goals because my mentors taught me years ago to write down goals. It gives me direction, it gives me focus, it gives me purpose, but they can more of an attractive person. So I invite you that most people don't even have 10 written goals. I invite you to consider if you want to achieve things in your life, especially to write down specific, measurable, actionable goals. I've already achieved five of these 10 goals that are written down as what I call my personal promises. Some of you know Gene Frederick and some of you will um, have met Gene and you'll be at the Build Conference here next week in Dallas. If you ask Gene, Gene's one of the top incomers in EXP. He's been in the real estate industry for decades. He's a legend. If you ask Gene what his goals are, Gene will pull them out of his pocket and he'll produce physical documentation to show you his goals. A lot of high successful people always have written goals. And I know it works because I've got measurable results to prove it for over my life. So the key thing is, number one is your promises. So this year, we're now in the month of August of 2022, between now and December 31st of this year, what are the goals that you really, really, really want to accomplish in your life? And I want you to write them down in your life, personally, what are the goals between now and the end of this year that you want to accomplish, you are committed to accomplishing in your life, okay? So that's the key thing. So those are personal promises. So I don't call goals or dreams goals or dreams. I call them personal promises because now it's more intimate. It's more personal for myself, okay? Then how you achieve these goals. So, so here's what I'd like you to write down. So when you hear the, me say, I have over 7,000 written goals, to some of you, that's anxiety. Some of you, that's overwhelmed. Like, how the heck can you achieve 7,000 goals? You want me to tell you the secret? Here's yes, like, you please write, do. I please want you do, to write this I, down. I was thinking that exactly. I'm like, 7,000, how are you managing all that? Yeah. Here's the, key, here's the thing I'd like you to write down. Most of your goals and dreams don't require your actions. Most of your goals and dreams don't require your actions. While I'm sleeping, my goals are being achieved. My 7,000 goals are being achieved. Darren, Mo Sir Darren, can you, sorry to interrupt. I'm just curious. Can you give us a couple examples that yeah. uh, on what you said that uh, our goals, most of them don't have to be uh, what we're doing or yeah. anyway, what you just said. <laughs> so yeah. I'm still trying to process it all. You bet. So most of your goals and dreams do not require your actions. Yes. What it requires is creating teams and teamwork. So I'll give you, an, I'll give you some practical examples, okay? So I have, starting next month in the month of September, I have a university. I, I, I went and guest spoke a few months ago at a university, and the uh, professor came up to me afterwards. He goes, what, what do you need? How can we help you? And I said, I'd like to make a request. And he goes, what's the request? I said, I'd like to come back in the fall have a conversation with some of your students. I like to pull them out of university or college. And what I like to do is I like to mentor them, right? During one semester as, a, as an apprenticeship program or a practicum, and they'll work virtually or remotely with me and we'll delegate some tasks to them. We'll use a Trello board, a project management board called Trello. We'll use a WhatsApp channel as well. And I'm gonna assign them tasks for them to do certain tasks experientially so they're going to get the practical training development and mentorship versus reading from textbooks in school. And this is going to help advance their degree, build their self-confidence and their self-worth, build their communication and team building and leadership and public speaking skills. And at the end of the semester, we'll evaluate them for their academic mark. So I have 15 students coming to work with me financially, no cost. Okay. So now I've got 15 people. So what I'm going to walk them through on a Zoom video conference call is I'm going to walk them through what my goals and dreams are and what I'm working on, like solving for and accomplishing, and then have them pick and choose what they want to be accountable and responsible for for the semester to follow through and achieve them. 
And there are thousands of universities and colleges around the world. Some of the people, a lot of real estate agents say to me, Darren, I can't afford a virtual assistant. I can't hire an executive assistant. I can't hire someone to do my social media. It's not my budget now. You don't have to hire anybody. There are, there are thousands of students out there in universities and colleges and high schools and people. I have a buddy of mine last week called me up. He says, Darren, listen, I need a fractional CFO. I need somebody part-time as a fractional CFO to work in my company. We're a startup. We're not at a half million dollar market. We just don't have the budget right now to hire a fractional CFO. Do you know anybody that can help me? I said, where do you live? Tells me, I said, how many people live in your neighborhood that are senior citizens that are retired or semi-retired that would just love to keep their mind engaged and sharp and active and help out? I had a gentleman a few years ago. Um, we were building a company and we didn't have the money to hire someone for legal services. So I went to a gentleman who was in his mid seventies, who was a retired business attorney. And I asked him, I made a request. So here's the key thing. When you make a request, so for every question you don't ask, the answer is always no. And when you make a request, people only do one of three things. They'll accept the request, they'll decline the request, or they'll counter offer the request. So when you make a request, let people choose whether to accept, decline, or counter offer the request. Okay? So the key thing is, I made a request for this gentleman to go ahead and to... Um, to to help us out with legal stuff. He had all the templates. He's given us thousands of dollars and thousands of, you know, I shouldn't say thousands of hours, but hundreds of hours over the last few years of pro bono work just to keep his mind engaged. So a lot of times when we need a virtual assistant or an executive assistant or somebody to do our social media or somebody to build our CRM, we're thinking, oh, we're going to pay. Not everybody wants to be financially compensated. Some people just want to be around your positive energy because the key thing is for some people, it's not about return on investment of financial dollars. It's return on energy, R-O-E, return on energy. No, some like people that. are around environments where it's toxic to them. It's negative. They want to get around an inspiring environment where they get hope, they get inspiration, and it builds their belief center, builds their mindset. So when you're around some people, they just want to return on energy. They want to be around an environment. And the key thing is, so when I bring on university and college students, we're, we're trained developing and mentoring these students as the next generation to go off into the workforce. We're giving them an opportunity to be a part of something. And so one of the things I want you to consider is when you want to, when you need people to help you, because most of your dreams, most of your dreams don't require your actions. It's all about creating teams and teamwork. That's the key thing. Now you don't have to lead the teams. You can find somebody to who likes to be like an integrator type personality style, that man or woman, to run your teams and then report to you. I've built lots of companies. We took a company during COVID. I took a company during COVID and we turned it into a $6.4 million company in the accounting industry in the United States, okay, called Profitopia. It's one of the companies I have. I took my friend who's a CPA and I said to him, I said, what's the biggest problem right now in America with CPAs? He goes, the average CPA charter professional account is 59 years of age in the United States. Between now and 2030, over 100,000 licensed CPAs are set to retire. Wow. I said, that's a big problem. I said, why don't we help these, these CPAs retire, do their succession plan, their exit plans? Let's acquire and roll up these accounting firms. Let's, so we have over 70 full-time people in the last two years we've hired across the US, India, Philippines, and Africa now working with us 24-7. So we turned a crisis into an opportunity. So right? Sir Darren here real quick, as we're coming down uh, on the bottom of the hour here, um, on the 7,000 goals that you have, and most of them don't require your action or what have you, can you think of some examples for, because we're all realtors here, right? So on right. this call, we got about 60 of us here. Are there some goals that you can think of as examples as for us as realtors that wouldn't require our action? I'm still trying to wrap my mind around that. Maybe you got some examples. For sure. Absolutely. So the key thing is there are people in your immediate circle right now that love you and want to see you succeed, but you're not making requests to them for referrals or recommendations or endorsements. Hmm. There are people right now that will help you build your real estate business, but you're not making a request to them and letting them powerfully choose. Um, you know, you know, years ago, um, when I first got started with EXP in 2013, 2014, there were a number of licensed real estate agents across the United States and Canada that I never shared the opportunity with. And I've brought over a lot of people to EXP. I'm not an agent. I serve on the board of directors. I receive no financial compensation. I get joy out of it by seeing a lot of people succeed in this business model, right? So what I do is I realized in my life that I never shared with everybody. So I just share the opportunity with everybody now and let them choose whether they want to accept, decline, or counter off the opportunity. But I let them choose, not me. 
I don't make the decision for them. So I have no shame or guilt. So the key thing is, is start, whatever area of your life is not working, I can tell you right now, you're not making requests. So if you, if you, if you are not thriving and succeeding financially right now, you're not making requests. If you are not having the extraordinary relationship that you want right now, you're not making requests to have people, you know, look after your children while you go on a date night. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, because we all have 24 hours in a day. So the key thing is it all comes down. If you watch my life and you watch other high performance people, there's a lot of high performance people on this team. We're making requests all the time. We're request making machines, always making requests. If you're around Sir Richard Branson and you followed him around, he is constantly making requests. If you're around uh, Donald Trump as an example, he's an example. He's always making requests. You give, you, you give Bill, Barack Obama, anybody give you any name, Oprah Winfrey. I give you all kinds of names of people. You watch these men and women. If you watch behind the scenes, they're constantly making requests from people. Hey, can you help me with this? Can you make an introduction to this? Can you do this for me? Can you help me with this? You can actually make a request for people in your neighborhood to go do your groceries and people would, there's people in your neighborhood that would accept it. Huh. And all you have to do is give them 20 bucks a week for gas money. I, I'm not kidding you. You would be amazed when you start making requests of what people will do for you. Interesting. Well, I know we're, uh, gosh, we could go on uh, and, and there's a lot more to unpack and, and go down and, and really uh, go after, but we're just frankly out of time. Uh, would there be one, one takeaway that they could uh, take away with them that you would have that you could sum up in 60 seconds or less that would be more of an action item or something that would really kind of move the needle for them? Well, first of all, the key thing is, is your success is someone else's miracle. I want you to always remember that your success is someone else's miracle. The more successful you become, it's a miracle to somebody else. Your success is, I want you to feel that for a moment, that question. Your success is someone else's miracle. Hmm. Right? And so the key thing is, is we're just a network of conversations. And the thing is that we, our mind chatter gets in the way of us mm -hmm. having conversations with people. Mm -hmm. But if you just come from a place of being a go-giver, as Bob Berger wrote the book called The Go-Giver, Bob's a great guy, go-giver, being a go-giver, not a go-getter, and following up with people and connecting with people. So when you're calling people, you're calling leads, you're following up with people, don't look at this what you can get. Come from a mindset of what you can give. There it is right there. And how it you is. can be of service to other people. That's the key thing. It's not about being a go-getter. It's about being a go-giver and be, being in service to other people. And share with people what your goals and dreams are. See, most people are too private what their goals and dreams are. I'm not at home right now. I'm actually traveling. So I'm at uh, my family's backyard right now. But if I was at home right now, I'd show you behind me in my home office. I have a must meet list. It's in my book, but I have a must meet list of hundred people around the world that I want to meet. Wow. And I always play this game with people like, these are the people I want to meet. Can you help me connect? Can you connect me with these people? Because proximity is power. It's not what you know, it's who you know, it's who they know it knows you. Because proximity is power. Being on this call is proximity. I love it. Right? Going to the EXP conference in October in Las Vegas is proximity. Going to the build conference is proximity. The key thing is you don't, when, the thing is in, in my life, see, when I was very insecure and, and I didn't believe in myself, I just had to get around environments and rooms people that did believe bigger than me. And mm -hmm. that's the key thing is when I was struggling and challenged and defeated and wanting to quit and wanting to give up and things were going sideways and I was upside down financial and all that stuff. I just got around people. One of the things I'll leave everybody with, what I like everybody to do is that we all work virtual. If you live in a major city, what I want you to do over the next week is go to a Fairmont, a Four Seasons or a Ritz Carlton hotel. And I want you to go work from the hotel lobby at that hotel just for a few hours. Wow. And when I first started doing this, I didn't have any money. So I couldn't even afford tea or coffee or a salad. I didn't have nothing. I had nothing. I couldn't even pay for parking, nothing. I, I, I was, so I went and I just would just hang out. And if you say, why would I go to a Fairmont or Four Seasons or Ritz-Carlton Hotel and yeah. work remotely from there? Because it's going to change your environment. It's going to change your energy. And you're going to come from a different mindset of abundance and prosperity. And guess what? The people that walk in and out of those doors are of a different vibration. They're a different mindset. And they walk. I was, um, just before I go here, a few weeks ago, I was in Vancouver and there's a guy named Jimmy Patterson. If anybody on the call is Canadian, you'll know who Jimmy Patterson is. He's the fourth wealthiest guy in Canada. He owns a, he employ, owns a lot of companies. He's a multi-billionaire. He's 93 years of age. He's 93. Jimmy Patterson, you can Google him. He's 93. And Jimmy's walking through the Hyatt Hotel and I catch up to Jimmy. I go, Jimmy, I'm just curious. 
why are you walking so fast? He turns to me, he goes, Darren, I got to make a living. <laughs> he, he's 93 years old. He's like, I got to make a living. I got lots of things I want to accomplish in my life. And he's 93 and he goes to work six days a week. And you know what he said to me? I'm building another fortune so I can build children's hospitals before I die. There you go. That's awesome. Well, uh, man, uh, as always, there's so much more that we could go and, and deliver and unpack. You always over deliver. I love it. I want to pass it over to Mr. Tom Daves. That's got some announcements and things. Uh, this is recorded, you guys. So I believe we'll put this on Atomic Habits, our Facebook page. If you're not a member there, go into Facebook, search groups and look up. Um, uh, what is it? Uh, um, <laughs> Tom, help me out here. Save me. Why am I drawing a blank? Yeah. Powered, uh, Atomic Habits, powered by EXP, right? Atomic Habits, that's there right. We well, thank you so much, Sir Darren. Thank you, Matthew. Um, you know, success leaves clues and proximity is equal to success. So speaking of that, this Friday, we have from Club Wealth, Michael Hellickson, one of the top coaches in the country, doubling your production within the next 12 months. So it's Freedom Friday, 9 a.m. Pacific. You don't want to miss it. And let's not forget, next week is build. Be there no matter what it takes to get there. You can make it happen. So, hey, with all of this, now we all got our inspiration. Thank you. Time to put in a perspiration. Have a good day, everyone. Thanks, Matthew. Thanks, Sir Darren. See you all later. Let's all go. Right.